Hi folks, this is Linear Algebra Quiz 7. I'm given a set of matrices. I'm regarding them as a subset of 2 by 2 matrices. I want to find the span of this set. So what is the span of a, of a set of vectors? Well, by definition, it's a set of all linear combinations of those vectors. So if u is in the span of x, u has to look like some constant times the first vector in there, first matrix, plus another constant times the second matrix. If I do the arithmetic here, I get that. So the span of X is the set of all 2 by 2 matrices that look like this. Do you recognize that set? This is the set of all diagonal matrices. So that'll do it for number one. All right, number two, I'm given a set of vectors uh, regarded as a subset of P2. So remember, that's all polynomials of degree two or less, including the zero polynomial. And I want to show that it actually spans P2. And then we're given a follow-up question, um, does it span P3? Okay, so how do I show something spans a vector space? I have to show that every vector in here is a linear combination of vectors in there. So I start off, I let uh, u be some fixed but arbitrary element of P2. Then what does u look like? It looks like some at squared plus bt plus c, where a, b, and c are real numbers. So what do I have to show? I need to show that u is in the span of x. So I need to show u is in the span of x, i.e. there are uh, real numbers c1, C2 and C3 so that U equals C1 times 3 plus C2 times 5T plus 1 plus C3 times T squared minus 3T plus 4. In other words, I need to find C1, C2, and C3 so that 3C1 plus 5T plus 1C2 plus T squared minus 3T plus 4 times C3 equals AT squared plus BT plus C. So for any given A, B, and C, I've got to find the C1, C2, and C3. That'll do the job. So in order to make this happen, we're going to match up the coefficients of the like powers of T. So this is very reminiscent of how you would solve partial fraction decomposition problems back in Algebra and Calc 2. So we're just going to match up both sides here of this equation. So on the left-hand side, I'm going to look for the coefficient of t squared and match that up to the right-hand side. And I'll do the same thing with t and then with the constant. So t squared. Where am I going to get a t squared? I'm going to get a t squared from this guy, and his coefficient is c3. 
On the right hand side the coefficient is a. On the left hand side uh, the coefficient of t I'm going to get 5c2 here minus 3c3 from there. On this hand uh, there it's b. And then for the constant I got a 3c1 plus c2 plus 4c3. So I ran out of room. But 3c1 plus c2 plus 4c3. And on the right hand side that's equal to c. So what this does is we're given a, b, and c. We're having to find c1, c2, and c3. We're given a system of linear equations. c3 equals a. 5c2 minus 3c3 equals b. 3c2, excuse me, 3c1 plus c2 plus 4c3 equals c. And I have to show that this system is consistent for any choice of a, b, and c. Okay, to show that this is a system of equations is going to have a solution for every choice of a, b, and c, I have three equations and three unknowns, and I'm going to write it then as a matrix equation, ax equals b. Well, I don't think I'll use b. b is getting overused. I'll say d. Where a, of course, is the coefficient matrix. 0, 0, 1 for the first equation, 0, 5, negative 3 for the second equation, 3, 1, 4 for the third equation. The matrix X is the unknown matrix, C1, C2, and C3, and the constant matrix is A, B, C. So let's look at the determinant of A. It reminds us of a lower triangular matrix. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and expand along the first row. So I'm going to get 1 times the determinant of 0, 5, 3, 1. And when I do that, arithmetic I get negative 15. And what's important about negative 15? It's not 0. That tells me that A is invertible. So that tells me that AX equals D has a solution. In fact it's a unique solution for every choice D. What does that mean? Uh, that means that X spans P2 because every polynomial in P2 can be realized by a linear combination of vectors in X. Now, the follow-up question we can take care of pretty quickly. Each of these guys are also elements in P3, polynomials of degree 3 or less. Does X span P3 explain? Well, the answer is no. X does not span P3. Since Y. I'd have to find a vector in P3 that's not in the span of X. Well, P3 contains things up to degree 3. These are just things up to degree 2. So t cubed itself is going to be in P3, but you're not going to get t cubed in that using the usual rules of, uh, of algebra. All right, so that'll do it then for number two.